Welcome to another episode of My Point Three Garage. And today, Chris is gonna change the oil. It's time. Uh, we have driven this thing a thousand miles. It had 40 unexplained miles on the vehicle. No one can tell me where that 40 miles came from. It was on the very back bottom of the trailer. Uh, so, and when we were videoing it coming off the trailer, the guys that were driving the truck, I uh, didn't really want to be filmed, so I don't know what kind of history this thing has for 40 miles. But anyway, we're going to change it. You don't have to change your oil within the first thousand miles. Just wait until you get your reminder or you hit 5,000 miles and then, and then change it at that point. We like to uh, obviously work on things, so why not? For 40 bucks, we're going to do an oil change, get this thing back up to square, and then we're going to drive it for another three to 5,000 miles before we change it again. We're going to make this video as concise as possible so that you can get on with your day. So let's get started. And our oil change tech, Yeti, uh, is here. And what makes him the best oil change tech is the fact that he's a white husky. <laughs> and so he always knows when uh, something has gone wrong, we can see a big oil splatter on him. We know that something's gone wrong. To get this oil change done, you just need a few things. So I have obviously some rubber gloves. Uh, you might want to use some eye protection as well because when you're taking off the uh, skid plate especially, uh, you're going to get a lot of loose particles that are inside that skid plate that are going to come off likely. And then you also need 15 millimeter in order to take the bolts off the skid plate. I'm going to use an inch and sixteenths for uh, the oil filter, which is right here. You're also going to need a pair of pliers in order to pull the drain plug out because the drain plug is a plastic drain plug. You also need your filter, and I will list these parts in the description as well as seven quarts of 5W30 premium motor oil. We're using Motorcraft because that's what Ford suggests. This filter actually was the least expensive of the filters uh, at $8.99. So even though it comes with O-rings and everything, it's still a pretty inexpensive filter. And we got it for free because we bought the oil and it, it came with a free filter from Advanced Auto. Let's get started. First, we ran this up to operating temperature so the engine is nice and warm and uh, we're gonna be able to get that oil out of there. Second, I place a tarp down when I do an oil change, especially on the first time I've ever done an oil change on a vehicle because this plug actually faces out sideways. I'm gonna put my catch, I'm gonna project where the stream's gonna go so I can hit it, but I know I'm gonna get some splatter and things like that and I don't wanna get it on my driveway. So I always throw one down, plus it makes it easy to slide in and out because I don't use a creeper for a lot of things. Slide down underneath there. First thing we're gonna do is take off the skid plate. So you've got two bolts in the back and you've got two bolts in the front. The two bolts in the back are gonna come out. The two bolts in the front are just gonna loosen and you're gonna slide the plate out this way. Now I'm gonna loosen the front. It's about, it's about 10 half turns. So that's loosened up. Now we're gonna pull the plate out. That plate is super light. That's not a big deal. So there's the oil plug right there. And then it's right next to the steering rack. So there's not a lot of room there. So let's go ahead and pull this cap off and see what happens. I'm actually gonna put my oil catch a little further ahead of where that is. I'm assuming it's gonna shoot all the way over here, but we're gonna see where that hits. So we're gonna loosen that, which is pretty easy enough. All the way out. And... Wow, that's dirtier than I thought for a thousand miles. Then we're gonna go up top and we're gonna use, uh, I'm using a one and sixteenths wrench because I don't have metric that big, but it looks like it might be a metric. 1 of 16 works really well. So we're just gonna take the oil filter housing off. You're gonna see three O-rings here that we're going to replace that come in our oil filter kit right here. So we're gonna pull these rings off. I'm using a pick. And we're gonna take our new O-rings out and we're gonna replace our O-rings, largest first, smallest last. And my suggestion is don't do this over the engine bay. The two largest ones, are gonna be really easy. Just a slight bit of pressure, just like that. Now the small one is tougher. You're gonna to have to apply quite a bit of pressure to the small one to get it seated. Now that we've got it on that part, we're gonna use our pick just to roll it on, just like that. There you go, that's all ready to go. Now we're gonna pull, pull your filter out. We're gonna use a napkin, come up back over here. We're gonna pull that one out. So you can actually see this one has, if you look down in there, you can actually see metal inside the filter. See those, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there's a lot of metal. Not a lot of metal, but there's metal inside of there. So I'm actually glad I did this oil change. We're gonna clean up around old filter housing. Take our new filter, we're gonna stick our new filter right inside. And then we're gonna take our filter housing, slide it right over the top, and then push down until you feel the filter seat. Start turning it by hand. 
In order to get the thread started, you're gonna tighten this down and on the filter housing, it actually says really not a lot. Now we're gonna go underneath and we're gonna put the drain plug back in. Then we're gonna stick the plug back in. Tighten it down and it snaps when you're done. Now we're gonna do a double check. So we have pulled the skid plate off. We've drained the oil. We have replaced the filter and put the new O-rings back in. We have replaced the drain plug. And then now we are going to put the oil in. So the key to that is do not forget to put the drain plug in. So we're gonna start with six quarts of oil and then we're gonna check. I'm gonna wait 10 minutes, check the dipstick and see where we're at. If it looks like we're within the hash marks, I'm gonna start the car, let it run for probably 30 seconds to a minute, and then I'm gonna stop it, wait for another 10 minutes, and then check the oil, and then add as we need to so that we don't overfill the crankcase. So first things first, we're gonna pull off the cap, and we're gonna put a funnel in there. We're using Buttercraft 5W30 Synthetic. And then this should make it six quarts really hard from the side to see where this dipstick goes pull this back out again and see if it's even registering so i've got six quarts in there and i'm already at the top dot so i'm going to try that again just to make sure that this is correct down in and back up second pass same as the first the oil goes all the way to the second dot so now we're going to circulate the oil in the engine and see if we need to add any more oil first we're going to put the cap back on then we're going to put dipstick back in We've run this for a few minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and shut it off. Now we're gonna have to oil run all the way down to the oil pan, and then we're gonna check it again in 10 minutes, see how we do. And after we ran the motor for a couple of minutes, we're gonna check the oil pan again and make sure that it's not dripping. And it is dry. So we are good from the seal, so now we're gonna put the skid plate back on. We're gonna slide it right under the two bolts that are in the front. Just like that, we're gonna secure it by hand tightening the bolts. All right, and then we're gonna tighten these. Then tighten up your front pan. All right, that's it. Back up to the top. All right, it's been 10 minutes. We've already checked the oil pan to make sure it wasn't uh, dripping or leaking outside of that little plastic plug that holds it in. And we've put the skid plate back on. So now we're gonna just check this one more time to make sure that we don't need to add any engine oil. And right now it's right in the middle uh, of the hash marks. So it's not on the top end and it's not on the low end. And that's the way I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna drive it for a hundred miles just like that and I'm gonna check it again. And if the oil drops any lower than that, down to that lower dot, I'm gonna add about a half quart in there and then we'll be good. We only added six quarts of oil into this motor. Okay, now we need to reset our oil less. So we're gonna get in the car. We're gonna hit the menu button, which has the three bars on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. We're gonna come up over here. We're going to scroll down to settings, hit OK, oil life, hit OK, and then so as you can see we show to have 95% oil life remaining. Uh, we're going to hold down the OK button and that sets it back to 100% remaining and that's all you have to do. So that was the oil change in the Ford Bronco. 2.7 liter motor. It was probably one of the easiest oil changes that I've done on a vehicle. Now. Here are some tips. First tip, make sure you put down a tarp underneath the truck before you start this process because the uh, drain plug is actually sideways on the oil pan and it is a little bit unpredictable when you pull that plug out where that oil is exactly going to go. Second, make sure that you have your oil catch pan will be able to hold six to seven quarts of oil all at the same time. When we pulled that plug, more oil came out of that engine faster than in any other vehicle that I've ever changed an oil in, and that included the Raptor. Uh, it actually overwhelmed my purpose-built oil catch pan uh, and spilled over the side. Number three, pulling off your O-rings, just be careful with that small O-ring. It has a tendency to pop off and fly in, in weird directions, so make sure you do that in a place where you can find that O-ring if you are doing it. Don't do it over the engine bay. You will lose that you will lose that small oil ring. And then tip number four, only put six quarts of oil in your 2.7 before you start it up and check it because uh, it may, it says it holds 6.6 .6 quarts of oil, 
Um, we put six in to test it and it came out after we ran the motor it actually came out pretty good you may need all six and a half quarts in yours and we may actually put more in this after we drive it for a little while but don't overfill the crankcase so go six and check it and then add as you need to and that's a wrap from my point three garage this is the first episode in the maintenance of your bronco so the first maintenance you're probably going to do is an oil change but we're going to be going through each aspect of maintaining your broncos to make sure that you are set up for success and you have a long life with your Bronco. Please like this video if it helped you in any way. Please subscribe and share this video. We'll see you next time. And check out our other Bronco videos in the end screen.